I would love something spicy right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, mate? How the devil are you? So I don't know if we're watching this in two parts because this one's really long or if it's because a lot happens in this and we need to discuss it at length. But either way, man, totally cool with us. So we're going to check this out. I couldn't be more stoked to be here. This show's just getting better with age, like fine wine. So like fine Dornish wine. Oh, by the way, guys, we are starting House of Dragons soon. And if you guys would really like to help our channel, which would be a great favor to us, then maybe you could just like the video. That'd be really awesome. If you have any fun in this video, maybe subscribe, turn on the notification if you're feeling extra dope today. But, you know, let's go. Let's go. He's like, well, would you look at that? Who would have thunk it? Just what we wanted. I saw a comment that said this was Bella Ramsey's first uh, thing she ever did. And that's so adorable. Because <laughs> Game of Thrones is the first thing you ever did. Right. You're a baller. You're a legend. You're a true legend of Jen Alley. <laughs> so, I'm a legend of Bear Island. No, we just saw the legend of Jen Alley in Batman. That he was did wild. not look like a legend of Jen Alley in <laughs> Batman, but he did in Game of Thrones. Remember at the very beginning of this series when the fat little king hops off the horse and waddles over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robert. Yeah. And then tells Ned he got fat. Yeah. <laughs> and then Lady Catelyn looks at him, <laughs> side eyed. Good that was times. a good time. Good times. Remember when this was just like, we didn't even know this thing existed. I just started to notice, maybe we're starting to get a little nostalgic as this show. We notice these seasons are getting short. It's sad. This no more 10 season episodes. Oh, shoot these. There we go. No harm, no foul. How do we make it stop doing that? Now we have four hours. Dragon zone? Question mark? Tyrion said, look at me now. <laughs> weasel his way oh look at his uniform though it's tight bastard of winterfell the dwarf of casterly rock <laughs> really we lost each other atop the wall you were pissing off the edge if i remember right yes he was he picked up some scars along the road <laughs> been a long road but we're both still here i'm Tyrion lannister that was seaworth ah that's Daniel so Knight. cool they're it meeting each other sides the it's making me emotional day. feeling i don't know why luckily for me dave told you <laughs> Sandy is the Queen's most trusted advisor. Welcome to Dragonstone. If you wouldn't mind handing over your weapons. No way. Of course. <laughs> You're laughing because they look kind of alike, right? <laughs> like with the beards. I don't, I don't know how I felt about the way that <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Please. This way. It looked to me like he was very costumized. It looked Dothraki. <laughs> Where are you from? I can't place the accent. I was born in the island of North. Ah, here it's beautiful down there. Palm trees and butterflies. I haven't been myself. This place has changed. <laughs> oh, this is exciting. And some kind of nerve wracking. I hear she's alive and well. She is. Does she miss me terribly? <laughs> Your ex. <laughs> A sham marriage and unconsummated. I didn't ask. Well, it was. It wasn't. Anyway, she's much smarter than she lets on. She's starting to let on. <laughs> Good. At some point, I want to hear how a Night's Watch recruit became king in the north. As long as you tell me how a Lannister became hand to Daenerys Targaryen. <laughs> Long what journeys? To be honest, I was drunk for most of it. <laughs> True. My bannermen think I'm a fool for coming in. Of course they do. If I was your hand, I would have advised against it. General rule of thumb. Stark men don't fare well when they travel south. But I'm not a Stark. <laughs> but he is. He's a Stargarian. Yeah, there you go. There's a dragon, you guys. I'd say you get used to them. But you never really do. <laughs> Especially Tyrion. Come. The mother's waiting for him. Yeah, that's a long walk to get there, huh? I wondered why you weren't there to meet our guests. You begged us to summon the king in the north. Don't you want to see him again? I've done my part. I've brought ice and fire together. <gasps> Strange. You spoke so highly of Jon Snow, but when he arrives, you hide on a cliff. I didn't take you for a bashful girl. My time whispering in the ears of kings has come to an end. Oh, I doubt that. Give us common folk one taste of power. We're like the lion who tasted man. Nothing is ever so sweet again. Neither of us is common folk anymore. I love the way he's dressed now. I did not now. part on good terms with the king of the north or his advisor. Why? Yeah, go ahead, tell him. Because of mistakes I made. Oh. I would only be a distraction if I stayed. So where will you go? Volantis. If you don't mind my saying, I don't think you should return to Westeros. I will return, dear spider. One last time. My lady. I have to die in this strange country. Just like you. 
That was deep when she said she brought ice and fire together. Right, but I mean, I understand that he has reason not to like her, but what's her beef? I don't know, maybe because they're like rivals or something, Loki. I don't know. Does the floor look like dragon scales to you? <sighs> or am I tripping? Yeah, kinda. <laughs> you stand in the presence of Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen. Rightful heir to the Iron Throne, rightful queen of the Andals and the First Men, protector of the Seven Kingdoms, the mother of dragons, the Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, the Unburnt, the Breaker of Chains. Titles, titles. The resume, boy. This is Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a resume, too, if you knew. He's king in the north. <laughs> he died. <laughs> he came Thank back. Thank you for traveling so far, my lord. I hope the seas weren't too rough. The winds were kind, your grace. Uh, apologies, I have a flea bottom accent, I know. But Jon Snow is king in the north, your grace. He's not a lord. Forgive me. Your grace, this is Sir Davos Seaworth. I never did receive a formal education, but I could have sworn I read the last king in the north was Torrin Stark, who bent the knee to my ancestor, Aegon Targaryen. In exchange for his life and the lives of the Northmen, Torrin Stark swore fealty to House Targaryen in perpetuity. Or do I have my facts wrong? Uh-oh. I wasn't there, Your Grace. No, of course not. But still, an oath is an oath. And perpetuity means... What does perpetuity mean, Lord Tyrion? Forever. Forever. <laughs> so I assume, my lord, you're here to bend the knee. Oh my gosh. Dang, that's tough. I am not. <gasps> that's right, John. Oh. Yeah. Well, that is unfortunate. You've traveled all this way to break faith with House Targaryen? Break faith. Your father burned my grandfather alive. He burned my uncle alive. He would have burned the Seven Kingdoms. My father was an evil man. On behalf of House Targaryen, I ask your forgiveness for the crimes he committed against your family. And I ask you not to judge a daughter by the sins of her father. Our two houses were allies for centuries. Centuries of peace and prosperity, with a Targaryen sitting on the Iron Throne and a Stark serving as Warden of the North. I am the last Targaryen, Jon Snow. <laughs> and Sansa is the Warden the of the North, Loki. Made to mine. Bend the knee and I will name you Warden of the North. Together, we will save this country from those who would destroy it. Do you think he'll do it for the sake of the dragon glass? Man, he won't. I, I mean, I probably You're right. would. That's really all that matters, right? You're not guilty of your father's crimes. And I'm not beholden to my ancestors' vows. Then why are you here? Because I need your help. And you need mine. Did you see three dragons flying <laughs> overhead when you arrived? I did. And did you see the Dothraki? All of whom have sworn to kill for me. They're hard to miss. But still, <laughs> I need your help. Not to defeat Cersei. You could storm King's Landing tomorrow and the city would fall. Hell, we almost took it and we didn't even have dragons. <laughs> almost. But you haven't stormed King's Landing. <laughs> Why not? The ego's in here. But the Tyrion was a savior of that battle. You kill thousands of innocent people. It's the fastest way to win the war, but you won't do it. Still, that doesn't explain why I need your help. Because right now, you and I and Cersei and everyone else, we're children playing at a game screaming that the rules aren't fair. You told me you liked this man. I do. <laughs> In the time since he's met me, he's refused to call me queen. <laughs> he's refused to bow, and now he's calling me a child. I believe he's calling all of us children. Figure of speech. Your Grace, <laughs> everyone you know will die before winter's over if we don't defeat the enemy to the north. As far as I can see, you are the enemy to the north. I'm not your enemy. The dead are the enemy. I was about to say, just get it the out. Dead. I know. <laughs> You're getting on each other's nerves. Is that just say another it. figure of speech? The army of the dead is on the march. The army of the dead. The army of the dead is real. The White Walkers are real. The Night King is real. I've seen them. If they get past the wall and we're squabbling amongst ourselves, we're finished. I was born at Dragonstone. We fled before Robert's assassins could find us. Robert was your father's best friend, no? I wonder if your father knew his best friend sent assassins to murder a baby girl in her crib. Dang, she's mad. Not isn't that it matters now, of course. So many men have tried to kill me. I don't remember all their names. I've been shamed and betrayed. Do you know what kept me standing through all those years in exile? Faith, not in any gods. Not in myths and legends, in myself. In Daenerys Targaryen. The world hadn't seen a dragon in centuries until my children were born. The Dothraki hadn't crossed the sea. Any sea. They did for me. I was born to rule the Seven Kingdoms, and I will. You'll be rolling over a graveyard if we don't defeat the Night King. 
Damn, John. I know. The war against my sister has already begun. You can't expect us to halt hostilities and join you in fighting whatever you saw beyond the wall. To be fair, he's gonna have to convince him. Yeah. Believe That's a wild tale. I understand that. It sounds like nonsense. Mm -hmm. But so were the dragons but if to has other people. The Targaryen back to our shores. It has also made Jon Snow king in the north. You were the first to bring Dothraki to Westeros. He is the first to make allies of wildlings and northmen. He was named Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. He was named King in the North. Not because of his birthright. He has no birthright. He's a damn bastard. All those hard sons of bitches chose him as their leader because they believe in him. All those things you don't believe in. He fought those things for the good of his people. He risked his life for his people. He took a knife in the heart for his people. He gave his own... Let's go, Davos. He's passionate. If we don't put aside our enmities and band together, we will die. And then it doesn't matter whose skeleton sits on the Iron Throne. If it doesn't matter, then you might as well kneel. Swear your allegiance to Queen Daenerys, help her to defeat my sister, and together our armies will protect the North. There's no time for that. There's no time for any of this. While we stand here debating, it takes no time to bend the knee. Pledge your sword to her cause. And why would I do that? I mean no offense, your grace, but I don't know you. As far as I can tell, your claim to the throne rests entirely on your father's name, and my own father fought to overthrow the Mad King. Right, and that's fair. The Lords mm -hmm. of the North place their trust in me to lead them, and I will continue to do so as well as I can. That's fair. It's also fair to point out that I'm the rightful Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. By declaring yourself King of the Northernmost Kingdom, you are in open rebellion. It's more than that. Oh, I thought that was soldiers. <laughs> said it was a spider what is this you must forgive my manners you'll both be tired after your long journey we'll have baths drawn for you and supper sent to your rooms am i your prisoner not yet oh, i was i was expecting that answer for some reason that's tough man john didn't go there to get <laughs> held prisoner and start a freaking war i know he's like for real like can you just bend with us so i can get some of that dragon glass come john's on john's like damn it why can't i just find a camera i had a camera our Ironborn and Dornish allies were attacked en route to Dawn. And? Two or three ships escaped. The rest sunk or captured. Ilaria and the Sand Snakes dead or captured. The Greyjoys dead or captured. All of them? Yeah, we know who that was. Oh, there's oh, Theon. Oh, they got him? They got him like a fish. Dang it. Uh-oh. So he betrayed his sister just to get caught. Your sister's dead? Oh, yeah. You, know you saw him take her. I couldn't save her. I tried. You wouldn't be here if you tried. Yeah, that's what they're saying, man. They're soft these days. They said, you should have brought her back if you were still alive, my boy. Oh my gosh. No. It's a quick over there. That's your niece. I have niece. to be honest. This is making me hot. <laughs> he rides a horse and they're just like Tywin did. Oh my gosh. All right, come on, sir. Just have a little mercy here. Probably not. It's probably about to be terrible. My queen, please accept this gift on behalf of all of your loyal subjects in the Iron Islands. I give you what no other man could give. Justice. Oh, there's the queen justice. Justice That's the title. for your murdered daughter. And then she smiles. You've proven yourself the greatest captain on the 14 seas and a true friend to the crown. You deserve more than a true friend. And you deserve a proper reward for your heroism. There's only one reward I want. You shall have what your heart desires when the war is won. And you're dead. <laughs> Basically, like, not at all, bro. <laughs> Thank you, though. Cersei was tough. I know, I love that. commanding our naval forces and Jamie Lannister leading our armies, the sons and daughters of Westeros, She'll defend our country. Through the reins of Castamere. There's nothing quite like it, is there? Love of the people. I suppose you wouldn't know. The same mob spat at my sister not long ago. And if you turn on us, I will cheer to see your head mounted on a spike. All yours. They're just like seven heads, really. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, Listen, though. <laughs> if any advice at all, I would love to hear it. When we have an hour or two to speak as brothers. Advice? Does she like it gentle? Oh, rough. oh my gosh. I don't know why I've just accepted the fact that Jamie's like with Cersei at this point. <laughs> like, I feel weird about it, but I felt like you should have defended her for that. Maybe just in a brotherly way, though. I want you to know I understand. Even though we're enemies, you and I, I understand the fury that drives you. I was there that day when Sir Gregor crushed your lover's head. I closed. 
close my eyes, I can hear the sound of open <laughs> skull break. The sound of your scream. I never heard a sound like that. I thought that's true love. Oberyn looked beautiful that day. He really did. No one moved like him. No one had such skill with a spear. Even Sir Gregor couldn't stop him. If only he hadn't taunted him. He could have walked away and left poor Sir Gregor to die. But that wasn't your lover's way, was it? Now he's buried somewhere. And here's Sir Gregor stronger than ever. That must be difficult for you. When my daughter was taken from me, my only daughter. You can't imagine how that feels unless you've lost a child. I fed her at my own breast, even though they told me to give her to the wet nurse. I couldn't bear to see her in another woman's arms. I never got to have a mother, but Miss Heather did. She was mine, and you took her from me. Why did you do that? Take off her mouth, please. Your daughter's a beauty, too. Perfect Dornish beauty. I imagine she's your favorite. I know, I know, we're not supposed to have favorites. Still, we're only human. I'm sorry, I can't understand you. The gag makes it impossible to understand what you're saying. It must be frustrating. We all make our choices. Dude, she is so evil, bro. I lie in bed and I stare at the canopy and imagine ways of killing my enemies. How to destroy Ilaria Sand, the woman who murdered my only daughter. I thought about having Sir Gregor crush your skull the way he did Oberyn's. It would be poetic, I suppose, but fast. Too fast. I thought about having him crush your daughter's skull. She's so beautiful. I thought of this lovely face cracking open like a duck egg. No, it's just not right. Uh oh. Same way. Kyburn, he is the cleverest man I know. Clever enough to learn what poison you used to murder Marcella. The long goodbye was that it. The long farewell. That's the one. Is she about to just leave her down there, gagged up? How long does the poison take? Difficult to say. Hours, days. It depends on the subject's constitution. But death is certain. Oh, yes. Your right. daughter will die here in this cell. And you'll be here watching when she does. You'll be here the rest of your days. <laughs> if you refuse to eat the false food down your throat, you will live. To watch oh my gosh. To watch that beautiful face collapse. <laughs> Just like Cer Cersei says she pictures Marcella. All the while contemplating the choices you've made. Make sure the guards change the torches every few hours. I don't want her to miss a thing. Ooh. The worst way. I mean, to be honest, she murdered her kid. No. Baby, explain. Why is she doing this? Because th that queen's justice she just served turned her on. <laughs> that sucks. Jamie's like the rebound guy. <laughs> he knows it too. I don't know. He accepted it. What are you doing? No one can see us like this. I am the queen of the seven kingdoms. I'll do as I please. Hey. So awkward if you're Jamie. Your Grace, the visitor from Bravos has arrived. Good. And we'll need fresh sheets for the bed. At once, Your Grace. Ooh, boy, she's flexing it. Who is that, though? They have the short hair. Is that her handmaidens now? They kind of developed her style? <laughs> like could be even as boys. <laughs> <laughs> My condolences, Your Grace, on the death of your son. From all reports, he was a fine young man. The Iron Bank didn't send you here to offer condolences. Condolences and congratulations. Become the first ruling queen of the Seven Kingdoms. That's quite an accomplishment. The Iron Bank appreciates how you cast off the yoke of superstition, mm -hmm. freeing the crown from elements who sought to subvert the rule of law. The destruction of the Sept of Baylor was a tragic accident. Indeed. But sometimes tragedies are necessary to restore order and rational leadership. The Iron Bank wants its gold back. Your father yeah. never minced words either. And you are now engaged in a conflict on several fronts. We both know how expensive war can be. And we both know gold wins wars. Your vaults are empty. Your late husband's profligacy saw to that. Your wealthiest allies, the Tyrells, are now your enemies. You are surrounded on all sides by rivals for the throne. She's kind of screwed. Yeah, I didn't think about that. A winner. We don't make bets. We invest in endeavors we deem likely to be successful. A fancy way of saying bet. The war's already begun. I've drawn first blood. I decapitated the Dornish snake. My armada owns the Narrow Sea. Euron Greyjoy's armada owns the Narrow Sea. Euron Greyjoy is loyal to me. For now. Daenerys Targaryen has three full-grown dragons. How well do wooden ships fare against fire-breathing dragons? Her dragons might not be as invulnerable as some think. I'm guessing the Iron Bank invested considerable gold in the slave trade. How are your profits now that Daenerys has freed all the slaves? 
The slave trade has entered a downturn, it's true. From what I gather, she considers herself more of a revolutionary than a monarch. In your experience, how do bankers usually fare with revolutionaries? The Lannisters owe the Iron Man quite a lot of money, but Lannisters always pay their debts to former slaves, or Dothraki, or dragons. <laughs> That's a lot to consider. That was smart. <laughs> your father's daughter, indeed. Give me a fortnight. Stay in King's Landing as my honored guest. And when you return to Bravos, I swear to you, my debt will be paid in full. How's she gonna do that? <laughs> I was about to say, that sounds like empty words to me. Because <laughs> I'm putting my money on uh, the Dorthraki <laughs> and them dragons and the Dragon Queen and his brain and his determination. <laughs> Sorry, I could just keep going. That looks like a scary place to stand on. I came down here to brood over my failure to predict the Greyjoy attack. You look a lot better brooding than I do. You make me feel like I'm failing at brooding over failing. I'm a prisoner on this island. I wouldn't say you're a prisoner on this island. You're free to walk the castle, the beaches, to go wherever you want. Except to my ship. He took my ship. I wouldn't say we took your ship. I'm not playing word games with you. The dead are coming for us all. Why don't you figure out what to do about my missing fleet and murdered allies? And I'll figure out what to do about your walking dead men. It's hard for me to fathom, it really is. If someone told me about the White Walkers and the Night King, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do nothing, you wouldn't believe it. You probably don't believe me. It's hard to when you haven't seen it, you know? Same I with do, dragons. Actually. You didn't before. Grumpkins and Snarks, you called them. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Season one. You said it was all nonsense. It was nonsense. Everybody knew it. But then Mormont saw them, and you saw them. And I trust the eyes of an honest man more than I trust what everybody knows. How do I convince people who don't know me that an enemy they don't believe in is coming to kill them all? Good question. I know it's a good question. I'm looking for an answer. People's minds aren't made for problems that large. White Walkers, the Night King, Army of the Dead. It's almost a relief to confront a comfortable, familiar monster like my sister. I need to help prepare my people for what's coming. I can't help them from here. I'd like to leave. It seems unlikely that you became King in the North by giving up that easily. Everyone told me to learn from my father's mistakes. Don't go south. Don't answer a summons from the Mad King's daughter, a foreign invader. And here I am, a northern fool. <laughs> Children are not their fathers, luckily for all of us. Daenerys could have sailed for Westeros long ago, but she didn't. Instead, she stayed where she was and saved many people from horrible fates, some of whom are on this island with us right now. While you're our guest here, you might consider asking them what they think of the Mad King's daughter. She protects people from monsters, just as you do. She's not about to head north to fight an enemy she's never seen on the word of a man she doesn't know. After a single meeting, it's not a reasonable thing to ask. So do you have anything reasonable to ask? What do you mean? Maybe you are a northern fool. I'm asking if there's something I can do to help you. Dragon glass. Yes, volcanic glass. Obsidian. He says you have a tremendous amount of it here. Why are we talking about glass? We just lost two of our allies. <laughs> Which is why I was speaking to John. She's not going to want to hear it when it's about the... Ally. Right. The dead. What does the king in the north want with dragon glass? Apparently, it can be turned into weapons that kill white walkers and their foot soldiers. Or stop them, destroy them, unsure about the nomenclature. And what do you think about this army of the dead and white walkers and night kings? I'd very much like to believe that Jon Snow is wrong. But a wise man once said that you should never believe a thing simply because you want to believe it. Which wise man said this? I don't remember. Are you trying to present your own statements as ancient wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> Never do that to you. <laughs> the reason I believe Jon Snow is because he's here. I would have told him not to come, and he's here anyway. You don't have to believe him. Let him mine the dragon glass. If he's wrong, it's worthless. You didn't even know it was here. It's nothing to you. Give him something. By giving him nothing, take a step toward a more productive relationship with a possible ally. Keep him occupied while we focus on the task at hand. Costly rock. Oh yeah, that is their is task. Sir Davos said about taking a knife in the heart for his people. Did you notice that? You must allow them their flights of fancy. It's dreary in the north. <gasps> oh. What do you mean by that? Remember John died. Well, yeah, I know that, but what did what did Tyrion mean? Yeah, what did he mean by this? I think he just meant that they'd be saying some crazy um that's what I must allow them the flights of fancy. It's dreary in the north. Meaning they just like exaggerate and tell tales. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's dreary in the north. Dang, it's not often I didn't get what you were saying. That would be an insane sight. Amazing thing to see. Or that. I named them for my brothers, Viserys and Rhaegar. 
Oh. They're both gone now. You lost two brothers as well. People thought dragons were gone forever, but here they are. Perhaps we should all be examining what we think we know. Yeah, for real. You've been talking to Tyrion. He is my hand. He enjoys talking. We all enjoy what we're good at. No, I don't. You know I'm not going to let Cersei stay on the Iron Throne. I never expected that you would. And I haven't changed my mind about which kingdoms belong to that throne. I haven't either. They're both Tauruses. Yeah, John's George Washington over here. <laughs> <laughs> what was your name? They're both Tauruses. I will allow you to mine Stubborn. the dragon glass and forge weapons from it. Any resources or men you need, I will provide for you. Never mind. So if they end up defeating this army, it's all because of Tyrion. So you believe me then about the Night King and the army of the dead? <laughs> mm -mm. You'd better get to work, Jon Snow. <laughs> what a I'm not sure answer <laughs> for, for me. I don't know. I don't think she believes it. Yeah, but like I said, people didn't believe in dragons. How much do we have? 4,000 bushels, my lady. What does that mean? For the current occupants of the castle, it's enough food for a year. Perhaps more. What's the longest winter in the past hundred years? Uh, I'm not entirely certain. I'll check Mason Lewin's records. He kept a Aww, copy of every record scroll. You're telling me we don't have enough food. Especially not if the armies of the North come back to defend Winterfell. No, my lady, most likely not. Whatever direction the threat comes from, this is the best place to be. We need to start building up our grain stores with regular shipments from every keep in the North. Very wise, my lady. Mr. Walk and you'll see to it. Good job, Sansa. Way to take charge. Are they covering those breastplates in leather? No, my lady. Shouldn't they be? Once the real cold comes? They should indeed. Pardon me, my lady. Okay, Sansa. Why yeah. oh, isn't there leather on these? Making on, boss suits. moves. The Northerners are all facing north, worried about the threat from beyond the wall. So they should be. I know Cersei better than anyone here. If you turn your back on her. You don't know Cersei better than anyone here. I only meant to say that the woman who murdered my mother, father, and brother is dangerous. Thank you for your wise counsel. <laughs> One of two things will happen. Either the dead will defeat the living, in which case all our troubles come to an end, or life will win out. And what then? Don't fight in the north or the south. Fight every battle, everywhere, always. In your mind, everyone is your enemy. Everyone is your friend. Every possible series of events is happening all at once. Live that way and nothing will surprise you. So Lady be Sansa. water, my friend. At the gate. <laughs> Bruce Lee. That was crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Intense. That was a really good look into his psyche. All day he just contemplated. Like expect it all. Schemes. Oh my goodness. Let me cry. But is that even her brother anymore at this point? It's the three eye. Right. Look, he don't even look happy to see her. He's like... Hello, Sansa. He's so calm. Aww, he was so young. Last time they said, well, they both were. I wish John were here. Yes, I need to speak to him. Your father's last living true-born son. Your Lord of Winterfell now. Oh, I, I didn't think about yeah, that. Yeah, me either. I can never be Lord of anything. I'm the three-eyed raven. I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, shoot. It's difficult to explain. Try, please, for me. It means I can see everything. Everything that's ever happened to everyone. Everything that's happening right now. It's all pieces now, fragments. I need to learn to see better. When the long night comes again, I need to be ready. How do you know all this? The Three-Eyed Raven taught me. I thought you were the Three-Eyed Raven. I told you it's difficult to explain. <sighs> Bran. I'm sorry for all that's happened to you. I'm sorry it had to happen here, in our home. Wow, so he really, he really does know. It was so beautiful that night, snow falling. Just like now. And you were so beautiful in your white wedding dress. I have to go back inside, Bran. I'll stay a bit longer. Dang, so he's like Doctor Strange or something, right? He can see everything everywhere all at once. Right. Hmm. That's Jorah. What? He has skin? Hmm. Less than before. The infection no longer appears to be active. Let's back go. in the fray, whoa. Unlikely. One could almost be forgiven for thinking that the entire upper layer of diseased skin was debrided. I don't know anything about that. I just started feeling better. <laughs> I assumed it was the rest that did it. You're free to go, sir. This chamber is needed for the infectious, which you are no longer. Tali, I'd like to speak with you in my study this evening. <laughs> you might be caught. <laughs> Where will you go? <sighs> Dang, he's so beat up, though, ain't he? Sickness the moment I first saw it. I knew it would kill me. Daenerys Stormborn convinced me otherwise. The only place for me is back with her. 
I owe my life, her, and you. Oh. Your father saved me more than once. It's the least I could do. Perhaps our paths will cross again. I hope they do. Hey, so can you pause this for one second? You know how there's like always beef with someone's like their parents. So it's like a harsh moment when they see when they like see each other. This was like a good one. This was like the example of like your parent doing something for someone that you give a favor in return. And I love that Sam's just willing to risk it all. I mean, he has a whole family now. His whole life mission is to become this maester and he just risk it all out of respect and honor. Who told you to treat him? No one. Who forbade you or anyone to attempt to treat him? I seem to remember you. But you treated him anyway. I did, yes. I forbade it because it is dangerous and rarely successful, especially on someone of that age. You could have infected yourself and others. You could have devastated the entire citadel, but you didn't. It's a meticulous, difficult procedure. Many maesters whose chains are heavy with healing links have attempted it and failed. If you succeeded, how? I read the book and followed the instructions. You're a damn genius, Sam. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Maybe others didn't read the instructions. Right. Maybe they just winged it. That man is alive because of you. Like them tests that say, don't do the test, just write your name. Yeah. All these manuscripts and scrolls are rotting away. I need you to make copies of them. Your reward is not being immediately expelled from the Citadel. I mean, yeah, that's fair enough. To get started. Be careful of the paper mites. They like <laughs> flesh as well. <laughs> Paper mites. You heard of those? No. Nope. That sounds tough. Sounds like bed bugs on paper. We need to find Euron Greyjoy's fleet and sink it. He's already destroyed a good portion of our fleet to send our remaining ships after him. I'm not talking about sending our ships after him. Ooh. Dragons? So it sounds you like. You have to go yourself. Euron's ships could be anywhere or in more than one place. You'd be flying around the open seas alone for who knows how long. I wouldn't be alone. I would have Drogon, Viserion, and Rhaegal. What can anyone do to them? They can still do something to you. It only takes one arrow. It's too great a risk. You're too important. What about Castle Rock? The Unsullied will be there soon. And what will they face? A difficult situation. They know we're coming. Yes. Cersei believes my sole purpose in life is to destroy House Lannister. <laughs> she will be ready. She really believes that. <laughs> From the day no one has ever born. taken <laughs> Yeah, that is true. Assault. The Lannister army is still the army my father built. Oh, well gosh. trained and well provisioned. 10,000 men at least. They will see us coming. Oh, I hope nothing happens to Grey Is this going down like right now? Oh, yeah, they got their shields. The Castle Rock are impregnable. No. So far, nothing but unsullied. Fight up the walls will be hard. We will be at a disadvantage. Many men will die. Is this a hypothetical? Please be. Just as my father said they would. Interesting thing about my father. He built our house up from near ruin. He built our army. He built Casterly Rock as we know it. But he didn't build the sewers. That was beneath him. So he gave the Oh, he used to, to work down there, didn't he? Find. Me. Right. He was right. I was low. The company I kept, low. Women mostly. They weren't welcome at the rock. Father disapproved of that sort of behavior. Couldn't walk them through the front gates. I couldn't have them in my chambers. So in the process of building the sewers, I threw in something for myself. Ooh, dear. <laughs> it was a passage that began in an out-of-the-way cove by the sea and ended beneath one of the main guard towers. No better place for low pursuits than beneath the ground. Oh, this is a little chamber. Right? Rock is an impregnable fortress. But as a good friend of mine once said, Damn, Tyrion did them. Yeah. Give me ten good men, and I'll impregnate the bitch. And so it begins. That's crazy. Let's go, Unsullied. They will face the bulk of the Lannister forces. But my sister's armies fight for her out of fear. The Unsullied will be fighting for something greater. They will be fighting for freedom and the person who gave it to them. They will be fighting for you. That is why they will triumph. What a moment. What a sweet. Shame, man. It's wild how Tyrion, after all this time, was the catalyst for the demise of this place. Right. Add another braid to Daenerys' hair. Oh, no. Oh, no. So maybe Grey Worm versus Euron will be the fight we'll get to see? So Grey Worm versus Grey Joy. Where are the rest of the Lannisters? Where are they marching? Hey, what's Jamie got? He's 7,000 strong right now. Oh, he has Randall's army too. To Olena. Randall said he wasn't gonna do that. 
Well, he lied. That little snake. Yeah, sorry, guys. It's just raw out here. They just pulled up in High Garden, though. I was about to say, if it's a lunar, are they in High Garden? Because I've never seen it. Yeah. I saw the river and I was like, we just got to find some roses and we'll know for sure. Yep. He's high and there was a garden. <laughs> it's done. It is. And now the rains weep o'er our halls. The rains of Castamere quoted. Did we fight well? As well as could be expected. It was never our forte. Golden roses indeed. Your brother and his new queen thought you would be defending Castle <laughs> Rock. Bless you. The truth is, Castle Rock isn't worth much anymore. So you just let them take it. For now, they won't be able to hold it. Your and Greyjoy's navy burned their ships. We emptied the larders before we left. Eventually, they'll be forced to abandon their position and march all the way across Westeros. And you took your army, your real army, and went to where they weren't. As Rob Stark did to me at Whispering Wood. There are always lessons. That's, yeah, that's yes. wild. Yes. You must be very wise by now. My father always said I was a slow learner. If he was so clever, why didn't he take High Garden the moment your gold mines ran dry? I suppose I'll be able to ask him myself soon enough. No more learning from my mistakes, eh? Oh, she just Probably accepted not. defeat. With that sword? That was Joffrey's sword, wasn't it? Not that he ever used it. What did he call it? Widow's Whale. He really was a <laughs> wasn't he? <laughs> what? I did unspeakable things to protect my family. I never lost a night's sleep over them. They were necessary. And whatever I imagined necessary for the safety of House Tyrell, I did. But your sister has done things I was incapable of imagining. That was my prize mistake. A failure of imagination. She's a monster, you do know that. To you, I'm sure. To others as well. But after we've won, and there's no one left to oppose us, when people are living peacefully in the world she built, do you really think they'll wring their hands over the way she built it? You really do love her. You poor fool. She'll be the end of you. Possibly. It's worth to him. Not much to be gained from discussing it with you, though, is there? What better person to discuss it with? But perhaps you're right. If she's driven you this far, it's gone beyond your control. She's a disease. I regret my role in spreading it. You will too. I think we're done here. I know, I want the insults. Mm -hmm. Go out swinging, huh? Happen? Cersei had several ideas. Whipping you through the streets and beheading you in front of the Red Keep. I talked her out of those. Ooh. Will she take it? Will there be pain? No, I made sure of that. That's good. She's ready to go, man. She's not even scared she of it. She chugged that mug. Yeah. You saw that? Went out tough. I'd hate to die like your son, clawing at my neck. Wow. Foam and bile spinning. This is her last mouth. words, basically. Eyes blood red, skin purple. Must have been horrible for you. As a king's guard, as a father. A shocking scene. Not at all what I intended. <gasps> you see, what? I've never seen the poison work before. Oh, bro, 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 bro. Tell Sassy. I wanted to know it was me. Dude. <laughs> Damn. She <laughs> That's the Queen's justice right there, Jeez. boys. Jeez. Tell Cersei it was me. Oof. And she was blaming Tyrion, and that's gonna... Oh, man, we got a lot to talk about. Oh, Lord. All right, guys, so, geez, that was Game of Thrones, Queen's Justice. Babe, what you think? Amazing. I'm wondering, was the Queen's Justice actually delivered? But I guess when we discuss, we will determine I mean, that. it was definitely <laughs> delivered, but there was multiple ways that it could have been. Right. Basically, at the beginning of this episode, it started out crazy. John finally meets Daenerys. It goes, in a sense, kind of how I thought it would. Daenerys is all, like, bend the knee. And he's like, John's Aw. like, I'm kind of a free folk now. Sorry about that. It's a long story. And basically, I don't really think Daenerys believes him. I don't think she believes that there's really White Walkers. But Tyrion does. Does. But I don't know how much stock she puts into Tyrion. You right. know what I'm saying? I mean, I get he's the hand, but she doesn't have the she doesn't have the best options. Right. I'll put it that way. I think a parallel in that scene. I'm sorry <coughs> to like interrupt you from that thought. There's just a lot of the common theme of what your parents do the kids aren't gonna do and i think daenerys in this scene with john 
at first kind of was kind of, you know, saying you didn't like the Mad King, you're an enemy, we're open rebellion. And then it leads to eventually her kind of, you know, taking a different route. I thought that scene was interesting because in a sense, the hypocrisy was being called out in that scene yes. because John saying, well, my ancestors did this, so I don't really have like, uh, I don't really have a reason to back you per se. How do I word it? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like they were basically pointing out the hypocrisy in each other's claims. Because yes. Danny thinks that she has like a birthright claim and John's saying, well, that's kind of ridiculous because my, my grand, my, my ancestors basically like made that their over. claim was to overthrow your claim. Uh, right. Exactly. Yeah. And then in a sense, they sort of killed the Mad King fair and square. So right. The, Mad King, thing. the Mad King was killed by their rebellion, but the Mad King burned his family alive so right. there's a quote-unquote open rebellion but they're the new generation and it's they have a different approach on it which is like refreshing the problem with this universe is arguing the semantics of who's right who's wrong whatever it's almost impossible because at every moment of this show someone's betraying someone right I mean, look at your on like think about what yeah. his family's gonna say in a thousand years you know what i mean right he's gonna be the one who betrayed like, the right. king who betrayed <laughs> i wish everything i did got written down in the history books well, actually, right. No, no, I don't. But you know what I mean? Though, <laughs> right. like, no one's ever going to write about what I did in a thousand years. Right. It's just, it's just interesting to see how the generations change and adapt. I guess. Right. Yeah. John is doing it for the soul war that's happening, and he believes it because he fought him. Well, he's burdened with, he's burdened with the big picture. Like he didn't yes. choose to see that. Right. Like, he just happens to be the one who did. And so. he's, and he's protecting his people at all costs. But the cost just happens to be someone who's not taking him not bending the knee and doesn't want to really hear it otherwise so it's kind of tough he's making a difficult decision so it was interesting to see that dialogue just because i don't know it was it seems like there's more to it we'll see daenerys understands that if she takes her foot off the throttle and if she takes the war effort momentum away from her cause to focus on what john's saying that could be the end of her right. losing focus could be her head so she's done everything in her power to get herself and she's sitting there at dragonstone like of all places, she's watching her dragons fly at Dragonstone. Right. She can't take her eye off the ball. And I don't blame her. And I keep hearing that there has to be some type of convincing, but how do you, how, what are you going to do? You know what the elephant in the room was saying to me is that when Bran talks to John, all the convincing you need is I actually am the heir to the Iron Throne. Not you, honey. Sorry. What are you saying? Like, John, like the elephant in the room to me was John. Is you're saying what's the needing for the convincing? I thought it was going to be that John's going to get revealed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what saying. I was thinking. Yeah. I'm sitting here thinking, okay, all John needs to do is talk to Brand because, you know, Brand said yeah, I need exactly. to talk to him. And then that's all because, you know, Daenerys even said, you know, an oath is an oath. She's using all these mm -hmm. old school terms. So, like, it's going to be interesting to see her take on John, I guess. Yeah. That's, yeah. Of course, that's going to be interesting. That's the. I mean, that's the collision course that we're waiting. Right. I just said, I'm just sitting here, that, just yeah. like waiting for him to figure it out. You know how I used to have like family reunions I wanted to see. That's my thing. I'm that's like, a mm, huge come one. on, that's gonna yeah. be a huge moment for yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. I thought yeah. I thought the reason why they wanted to do a separate is like we were gonna find out or something. I'm like, dang, but it didn't happen. <laughs> give it time. Give it right. Time. Give it time. Uh, another thing that happened, man. Euron captured Yara, drug her through the city, basically just like they did Cersei, which was nuts. They had their own atonement, so to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, lots of cussing at her. And then she didn't do anything to her, right? Cersei left her just right. Yara, down. Yara, I didn't, didn't see anything with her, but Alaria and her daughter had to face the same consequences they delivered to Cersei, which was the Queen's Justice. Which, I don't know which moment was more shocking. I think when they killed the daughter, it was probably the more shocking scene of the two. But... I hate to say it, man, but an eye for an eye. In a sense. Right. To like, deliver it in the same way. And and you have to watch. Well, know your enemy. Like, if you're not willing to have that happen to you, don't do it to Cersei. Because exactly. She gets her hands on you. You like, know what she's going to do. You so. knew what Cersei was capable of. You saw you saw Joel Burin get his head crushed. Like, like obviously, Cersei deserves justice. And she's a horrible person. Like, terrible character. And when I said that, I like her character. I like her character because she's entertaining. Like, she's entertaining because she's so ruthless. So... Like, luckily, I don't live there. Like, I'm just watching it through a TV screen. So, and you put it best. She's on the screen. When she's on the screen, everything is important. Yeah. She so has that very makes her a very important yeah, character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
I, I, I'd rather have a beer with Jamie, a thousand percent. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I, ho- I hope you guys can understand that. But I just think as a character, I mean, she's so evil. Like, but so I do want to acknowledge in previous seasons, they have made Cersei's character out to be a wine drinker. Not really like, you know, and you can't help but notice she's wearing armor again. She's back to herself before she was that wine drinking, just like lady. She's definitely changed. It's made a it's made a real big difference that she's the queen now. So it kind of seems like she's taking it seriously. Well, I think the moment that she blew up the set, she went from. I mean, that's a really big character development moment. I mean, she essentially became like King's Landing's most wanted, even though they can't really get to her because she has that cloak of power. And like you mentioned, she hides behind uh, the mountain. Yeah. Right. And so. I think her whole entire mentality has changed because she doesn't have time for the leisures like wine drinking anymore. I right. think at this point she realizes she's in a fight for her survival and she's either going to win or her head's going to be on a fight. Right. So. And then it led to Cersei having a talk. I know this isn't like, cause we took, we wrote some notes down that we want to say, but we, I need to move this up cause it happened. She was talking to the iron bank. Um, I forgot the guy's name exactly, but she was talking to the, it was like Taicho or something. She was talking to the guy of the iron bank and basically she said, you know, I'm going to give this to you in a fortnight, which we found out means two weeks, which but, is why she sent Jamie to high guard. Right. And which, which was saved like, the Lannister army from that info. Yeah. Right. But getting destroyed. But I just wanted to point out how certain she was, but also how tactical she was in that moment. Because when she told that guy she was going to pay it, I didn't realize just how calculated that was until we were writing these notes back. And I was like, dang, she sent Jamie not only that Rob Stark trickery, the two B's trickery. She also had her plan to pay them back right there. I feel like in a sense, if you're the Iron Bank, you have to be very skeptical of Daenerys. Because if you're Daenerys and if you're talking about liberation and all this stuff. When you go down, you like you get to slaves. So there's masters and slaves, and then you you know you work your way down into the lower level, and there's slaves. But when you work your way all the way to the top, then you get into like the Iron Bank and like what makes the world go around, and mm-hmm. you know who's funding who and who's you know propping up what war effort. And I feel like Daenerys and a couple of dragons, man, they might take a little trip over to the Iron Bank and liberate some folks over there. Maybe and I so. feel like if you're the Iron Bank, you should be very skeptical of that. Right. You I, get what I'm saying? I th- and that's that's kind of why. Which is what Cersei was saying. Right. And I think that's why they even went to Cersei anyways, because they maybe had faith that she could pay it back. Because why would even why even show up if you didn't believe it? Right. Well, it was just one of those things that showed how, I guess, how bold she was in that moment. Because the Iron Bank was basically just trying to, like establish some power over her and put her right. in the bargaining position, like a lower bargaining position. Uh, yes. And Cersei basically said, nah, actually right. there is no bargain. It's either I win or nothing. Cause you remember Tywin and Cersei's conversation about the iron bank. So, Tywin even was kind of like, he even kind of was kind of making it seem like he was a shaking in the boots type about it. Mm-hmm. Cause he was like, you know, they, they'll really come for you. They'll, they get their debts paid some way. Mm-hmm. And that's when he was telling Cersei they didn't have any gold in the mine anymore. Right. Well, she was just kind of acting like a newbie to the conversation. But boy, did she learn from that moment. It was it's cool to see how Taiwan really affects her. Well, yeah. And then she made the yeah, she did make the comment that you think I didn't learn anything after all those years. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, I think her point was it wasn't she, she didn't really try to pay attention, but her dad really beat it in her head. So she had to learn something. Right. She learned. It's like she learned from the mistakes of her brothers. Right. Like, and she she's was the one just like absorbing and really like. Yeah. And she's a complete sociopath. So, you know, that helps. You yeah. know, it helps when you don't have to worry about consequences, you know? Yeah. It's always strategically. So, speaking of the Lannisters, we have Tyrion and a star beside him. My favorite. Go ahead. I'm so excited. Go ahead. Okay. So, as you know, Tyrion in this episode, he played a major role in two ways. One of which was he got Jon Snow and Daenerys to kind of like bridge their, you know, their what quarrel they had. He basically made sure that they established their relationship on a positive note. Right. Because he recognized that Daenerys was not trying to hear it. Right. And he also has respect for John and believes what John's saying because Because they're both men from the way Tyrion sees it from low positions. Even they're Tyrion's, cripple, they're yeah. cripples, bastards, and broken things, like Absolutely. episode two or whatever it was. But that's the infamous episode for us. You guys have no idea why, but that was the first episode <laughs> that we realized that ad suitabilities are gonna be an issue. Yeah. <laughs> to this day, we to this day, but <laughs> thing's got a big old yellow. Anyways, go ahead. Anyways, that episode, yes, was a big deal for us, but 
that dialogue in that episode is brought us to this moment because we realized that Tyrion and John have respect for each other and Tyrion got Daenerys to let John mine the dragon glass. And can I say something that's completely off subject, but can I just give a shout out to Peter Dinklage like as a human? Yeah. This man went from Peter Dinklage, right, which was the young man that we met early on season 1. And this dude has grown into just a phenomenal a phenomenal actor. Like, he is <laughs> killing this role. Yeah, like, he is. Kill- he's killing the beard. He's got the scars on his face. He's like he, a damn, He's like acting like, you know, we've seen. Like a pirate or something. We've seen the dang journey with him. So he's We're like. We are saying dang. We're throwing the dang word out. We're just happy. <laughs> well, we've seen the journey with Tyrion. So yeah. seeing him as like someone who's like traveled. I'm just proud of and him. And journeyed like, and weathered. He's like, look at me now. Look <laughs> at me now. Yeah, it's great. But Do anyways, something. back to what we're saying about Tyrion. The second thing Tyrion did was be a low level man in the Casterly Rock world and have that a whole sewage cool system. Yeah, I love that. That he was doing a little sneaky sneak. Thing. His dad was basically, his dad in a lot of ways wanted to, there was a lot of issues with Tyrion and we could go on and like on. Like his but. dad his dad, I'm sorry to use this phrase, shit on him in that moment because you know it was sewage. You get it, but it helped. <laughs> you get bold with the cussing young lady. No, I'm, just, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, it's just crazy to me because he was okay. So if you're Tywin, you're like, okay, well, this is my son. Blah blah blah. Put all my eggs in Jamie's basket. I get it. But you're like, nothing. It's not gonna help Tyrion to have all these like brothel visits and these you know lady friends over and all that stuff, right? So Tyrion has to go to these crazy links because he's like a full blown like sexual demon, yeah. right? Like who has to do? He's all that? changed a lot too, though, right. in that way. Like they 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 really did waste a lot of gold. Like think about how yeah. much gold. Like imagine like your dad lets you build an underground system. You have enough money to funnel like a like a sex ring down there. Uh, yeah, that's wild. And then and then imagine convincing a lady to go down there. Right. Like. I don't know, man. And then you have to take a boat, and <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, "What kind of? There's you better no have. Airflow. You better have a boat full of gold." I feel like whatever smell gets caught in there stays <laughs> in there, boy. Like it don't come out. Yeah, it's probably pretty raw in there. Anyways, uh, and that is essentially his. Da- but the thing is, is what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is his dad was doing that because he needed to keep him focused, but also to spite him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that ended up doing them in, right? You know, and I just I think that's crazy, and it just. It's one of those things where everyone in this world wants to stay loyal to their family. And what Tyrion's done is unheard of in this world. Yeah. Like he'll go down in history as the most infamous backstabber. I mean, he literally killed his dad on a toilet with a crossbow and then mm-hmm. fled the country. He'll go down in history as being accused of killing uh, Joffrey, probably. Well, I don't you know. know now because Jamie knows the truth. So we'll see. I mean, we'll and see. will Cersei believe it? Who knows? Like. I don't, know. I don't know. I mean, if I'm, yeah, because if I'm her, I, I'd say anything. I'd be like, yeah, I poisoned him. Of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Just to stir the pot up. Yeah. But our, the next thing was we just wanted to point out the, obviously, I don't know if it was Jamie or Cersei, but Jamie said he learned from his mistakes, which was a, uh, that dialogue was incredible. But Jamie used to be's war tactics, which we've addressed before. But if you remember in previous seasons, we're just making callbacks to it, I guess. Right. Which is good. It just shows that. Even though Jamie lost his hand and lost his sword, his his mind is still growing, and so Jamie's right. not done yet. So I really really like that little spot. Right, and it would kind of see, but when Cersei was so was so like smart when the Iron Bank person was there, it was kind of like Cersei knew about it too. So it kind of seems to me like maybe it was both of their planning. I'm not really sure. Yeah, another thing, man, I thought it was really interesting. The Red Woman is very scared of. Um, John apparently right because she well seems... she's exiled from him so well yeah but this isn't this isn't somewhere where he's making calls I mean she's at home right now but maybe she doesn't want to maybe she doesn't want John to walk up cause a big scene raise the alarm and Daenerys yeah head she said it she would murders. be a distraction remember it'd be a distraction right to put the focus on her and maybe her pro- right maybe her prophecy is like telling her like it's not about you girl it's about them because she yeah. said I I did what I needed to do I reunited them. Mm-hmm. Whatever that means. But when I don't know why that I put so much stake in that, but it was weird to me because they're calling Daenerys fire and they're calling John ice. And I think that's that's like the name of the books, right? A tale of fire and ice. That's why I like thought about that. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was important for her to say that. I, I'm not sure how much stake I should put into it, but 
when you when you're basically saying the name of the book that these whole things are about i thought it was important well this show doesn't waste a sentence so no it doesn't definitely important oh what else? but she's going to volantis and she is saying the next time she is to return will be the time she dies so when we see her she'll probably have to die which will suck oh I, I don't want to see her right right but if she does have to die man then i mean i'd rather i would rather her than john snow or daenerys so. so yeah no offense but yeah and then basically daenerys and Tyrion had a conversation Tyrion is leaning towards i believe john because i believe the word of a good man over what people believe to be true right and there's a lot of wisdom in that right but she on the other hand doesn't seem to be quite the believer so in her mind she's like whatever let them mind it and then in Tyrion's mind let them mind it because it'll keep him distracted and what if the dude's right? right but my thing is i thought danny would be a little more skeptical of allowing someone who in her mind openly declared rebellion against her rule to openly mine a weapon that is openly going to be turned into like he's going to mine something that they're openly going to turn into a weapon right from under her feet and she's going to let them do it as long as they want in order to be distracted right it doesn't seem like the best idea but maybe she doesn't fear this obsidian slash dragon glass but or maybe something in the back of her mind is just telling her to do it because to me what you said if i know someone's making a weapon i'm probably not gonna let you do it but you know maybe there's something that tells her that's the right thing to do or yeah. you know she's seen the prophecies she's seen the death rocky thing when she was in the fort thing she saw mm -hmm. all that stuff Maybe she has a belief in that or something like that. Yeah, but she didn't see no, no army of the dead or anything, did she? No, but she saw like she saw a bunch of like prof prophets. The blah, 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 you know that word, prophetic stuff. Is that the oh, right yeah, word? prophetic stuff? Yeah. Yeah, she saw. Yeah, so maybe she said she's seen a lot of stuff of prophecy. <laughs> yeah. What if it, you ever get confused of a word, just put the word in front and then switch it like that. Word of prophecy. Oh. Instead of prophetic. This word of prophecy. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's what she saw. Yep. That's right. Anyways. The, okay. So, if I had to pick the absolute gold mine of this episode right here, which, you know, we should put that last, but who cares? I would say it was Jamie and Olena's conversation. Which I was a little confused because I, I, I don't think I've ever seen High Garden before. Right, yeah. Right. So, so it was when, very weird seeing right. it, but it was very high. <laughs> oh i didn't even think about how high up that was that's I what i was saying like you laugh but he went way up to the top of it and there was a garden so i was like damn that it is a high garden I, yeah and i could be totally wrong and you know i don't remember ever seeing high garden i remember there being talk of it and maybe like someone received a raven there once and that's not never, what i was picturing I'll, yeah I'll yeah yeah that. but anyways I was picturing damn candy land but with flowers <laughs> that's what i was picturing <laughs> when i saw randall tarley i should have known because he was like i'm never going to betray it's an oath i'll never do yeah. it but then he did it anyways and so anyways just the conversation when she wanted her her final words to jamie were tell cersei it was me and it's like oh you don't you let everyone think it was Tyrion, and now you're ready to just let it out right it's one of those things it makes me wonder what it's going to be like going forward because what i gathered from that was that was a teachable moment from jamie jamie gave her mercy yeah yeah gave yeah. Her respect so the next then, thing he's going to do is going to be like watch out you get what i'm yeah. saying maybe that's just the way that some deliverance but you know what again, i'm saying i always keep in my mind at the very beginning of the series people told me i would love jamie so in my mind Jamie's past always leads towards positivity. Yeah, he's trying you to make up I'm for saying? his Kingslayer. So maybe he's. And we're getting late in the season, so I yeah. feel like at this point. But at the end of the day, I mean, he's still leading a Lannister army, and in my mind, it's hard to say. It's so hard to say because I don't like the Lannisters. I don't like the army. I know I like you know the characters and stuff, but I don't like them. Right. Right. So I, I like Daenerys' side of things. And I'm rooting for them. And I want to see Jamie like, I don't know. It's weird. Do you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just weird. Because I like him. I don't know how I'm going to, unless he betrays his house. Like, what if he betrays his family like Tyrion does? Uh, that's what I'm saying. I just don't, you don't know about Jamie. He's very unpredictable. But I think all roads for Jamie, to me, in my opinion, lead to Cersei. And I, I think that, I think it's so going to. he's never going to betray Cersei. Yeah, I think okay. something bad's going to happen between him and Brienne or something, you know? That's what scares me yeah, is I feel yeah. like that's the path I'm getting. I hope that's not the next with child moment we're going to get with him. But what you just said, I think that that moment was because Jamie just said right before I'd learn from my mistakes. 
I learned I learned that Rob's army. So I'm going to learn that I'm not going to show nobody mercy if they're going to betray my family. But I did want to say that that is the end of House Tyrell. There are no more Tyrells. They're done. It's crazy how these houses last for so long and then they're just gone. So it looks like kids. Sam's dad's going to be the warden of High Garden or whatever. Yeah. So because that's why he pulled up. So I guess so. I guess they now have High Garden in the the Reach. So you know how. Or Horn Hill, my bad. So the interaction between Daenerys and John wasn't overly hostile, right? Right. So maybe I'm leaning back towards the idea that Daenerys is going to go pull up on Cersei and eat her with a dragon. Oh. I think that'd be tough. I don't know. I feel like I feel like something's got to give, and maybe I feel like she's gonna Daenerys is gonna have to side with John at some point. I don't know what is gonna do, but I feel they're like all gonna have to side with each other unless they're yeah. But I I keep having these theories, but I'm not really calculating. But is Cersei the dead. ever gonna side with them? I don't know. What if at the end of the show the the dead just come and kill everyone, and that's the end of it? Right. And that's why there's a prequel that we're about to watch, and not a sequel. Yeah, true. <laughs> um another oh sorry baby you're You're just sitting here sneezing i'm talking um another dialogue that was you know seemed important was also sansa and little fingers per usual um little finger is trying to weasel his way into sansa's brain by telling her you know expect everything which to me was translating just expect your, your brother your focus. No, I felt like it was expect your brother to betray you. Expect everyone you love to betray you and keep just exactly, remember that. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It seems like Sansa's very goal oriented right now. She's got her eye on the prize, man. She's focused in that zone. And here comes a little finger. Overthink everything. Yeah, you must complicate everything. Let me make it. Let me give you anxiety. Here's some everyone who anxiety loves you is actually an enemy. <laughs> yeah, he's very weaselly and everything he says. But he's very smart, man, because what he says is very true and it's ancient wisdom and you hear it and you're like, man, little finger. But whoa, facts, whoa, facts. whoa. You know what I just thought about? What? She so he tells her that, right? And then immediately, the next thing Sansa's dealing with is brand pulls up. So then she's like, she just be- gets her warden of the north little title. And then Bran pulls up and she's probably like, oh man, I just got this title. Now it's taken from me because my brother is the true born son of, you know, the king of the north or whatever. And so there goes my that vibe, That's what I got because at first she was like, "You're you're the Stark's true born son," and he's like, "Yeah, but that doesn't matter. I'm the three eyed Raven." And she's like, "I don't know what that means." I feel like at this point, man, Sansa just I feel like I genuinely feel like Sansa doesn't have any ambitions for power. For really, I I get the vibe. I get I'm the vibe so she opposite. Doesn't. I'm so opposite of you because I when she was making all those big like major call moves, like hey, put leather on that. Hey, this they were just showing her being a working woman, and I got that vibe. Well, the if the idea is that Sansa, if Sansa's like, man, you know what? I'm, my ambitions used to be, I just wanted to be Joffrey's little princess and the queen and all that. But now her ambitions are, now I, I want the throne. I want to be in charge. Like, I don't I'm not think she wants out. the throne. I oh, think you just she think she wants to be in charge of Winterfell. Right, because... I think that her goal yeah. is to... Is Rule to the take, North. Exactly. And to not ever let it slip back Right. Into, and so that's her because goal. Because of all her negative okay, experiences. So we're yeah. We're and the reason why I get that vibe mostly is because... I can't help but notice how season one and two of Cersei is translating into Sansa's style. Not only with her conversations with Littlefinger, but if you notice her hair, because I love hair, so I notice hair a lot. Sansa's hair is starting to become kind of like in between Daenerys and Cersei at the moment. And she got offended, basically. She almost like got her feelings hurt when Littlefinger suggested that he knew Cersei better than she did. Right. It's just a lot of parallels between that because... You know, if you guys think about it, you could say, you know, Catelyn Sansa's mom or whatever. But at the impressionable age, Cersei was Sansa's mom. And Sansa's Weirdly. life, the main villains of her life, obviously, are Sir Ellen Payne, obviously. Mm-hmm. Joffrey, Cersei. Ramsay. Ramsay, obviously. And there was one other one I thought of. There's one other person who's just, oh, um, Lord Bolton. Vladimir yeah. Bolton. Mm-hmm. Or, or Walter Frey. And those are, dang, that's a lot of people to just despise, right? Maybe even Littlefinger, actually. Right. But I don't even know where I was going with that. But basically, at the end of the day, man, those are the people who she just hates. But she was just, ra- but basically what we're saying is she was just raised, like, on some chaos. Like, everywhere she went, 
the people that she had to just sit there and like show face with killed her family. Right. Yeah. So it's like, you kind of have to just like smile in the face of your enemies. And I feel like Sansa learned so much from that. Like it's incredible how much she's learned from that, which is like develop, making her character just like more developed. And honestly, I would love to see her lead. I feel like that's great for her, but John's the king in the North, you know? So well, John, do John, I don't know, man. John just, John's too busy. He doesn't have time to focus on Winterfell. It doesn't seem like he has bigger fish to Well, now that he has the wildlings, like, right. I feel like he's taken like a new Mance like position, but like even bigger because Mance was the great divider of the North, but he's not only dividing the North there, the wildlings, he's dividing. You're talking about the great uniter? Yeah. Not the great uniter. Oh, uniter. I always say that for some reason. Sorry. He's the great uniter because the wildlings. So he took what Mance had and united it with like Winterfell and all the, all those, the North people. Right. I mean, they're basically full fledged citizens at this point. Yeah. They're just people of the kingdom. Well, they're fighting for the cause now. So, and and they're being protected by the wall now. So they're in the realms, so to say. I thought it was very interesting to shift the subject a little bit. When Bran came, the way he explained what he was to Sansa was really nice to me. It basically put it in a new perspective. Yeah. I sort of understood that intuitively, but it was nice to hear him say it. He sees every event that could possibly happen at all different times. So right. he's basically kind of like, like you said, like Dr. Strange. Strange. Yeah. 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 Basically. So, like an Avengers. so when you think of it like that, that's actually very incredible. And he's like the watcher or something. It, right. And he's kind of telling her, I don't have time to rule the North. I'm sorry. I'm the true born son, but now I'm the three eyed Raven. So do, do you think that's why he seems so calm? Yeah. Because he's not tripping anymore. Cause he's just, he's just seen it oh, all. Maybe he knows or something. Ma- you know, you I saying? didn't think about that, but I, I was noticing his calmness. But to be calm, you maybe have to know what happens. I thought maybe he was just calm because he's like on shrooms or something. You know <laughs> yeah, like, he's a, he's like, I got that three eye raven like, juice. It's actually all connected, bro. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I love Brandon. We already talked about Iron Man and Cersei and money. Um, oh, Sam is the like maester of the year and he healed Sir Jorah and got put on scroll duty for it. So it's incredible that Sir Jorah is finally making his way back to Danny. Which I, I didn't exactly see how he did it, but it seems like. <gasps> Whoa. What if Sir Jorah, what if Sir Jorah is what is going to help Danny listen about John? Because Gior Mormont really spoke highly of John and even had gave the sword to him. Maybe so, but the problem is Jorah Mormont has not saw has has not seen a uh, White Walker. True, but if he knows it'd that be his very dad, if he would just happen to see one on the way home, <laughs> right? Like he just walk in and just, whoa, there's a couple <laughs> a couple whites walking, right? A white hey, Khaleesi, I seen it with me on eyes, Khaleesi. Right, but you know what I'm saying? Like that could just be another stake to help Daenerys actually support Jon's cause. I mean, I'm I was just thinking maybe that could come hand in hand. I'm just interested to know how that's going to come full circle and how. I mean, maybe they're just not going to believe them. Maybe the dead are just going to come, but they got to get through the wall, don't they? Yeah. Maybe they can go. Well, they can't go to Eastwatch because they can't go in the ocean, can they? I don't know. They seem. I don't smart. know how they work. Well, I don't really know too much about them, but I do know it was really weird. They how must not be able to go in the ocean because then they could just swim across Eastwatch or take boats. Right. Oh yeah, because remember at Hard Home they just were like they're chilling. Yeah, they were like, like water. Heck no. And they were like, no, nah, we're just not gonna swim at you. It's whatever. They better build a freaking bridge. Right. But anyways. uh I hope we never even have to get to that point. But I mean, what would I this gonna, be a show? What I was going to say, they were making a big deal about Sam Hill and him. And I don't exactly know how he did it, but it looked like he did it the old fashioned way. He just peeled that junk off. Right. right. And that seems like that takes two, baby. So um, good job. Good job to Jorah. But does that make you think that her. Sam's like maybe like magical or something or he's like going to be more important? Because he like can he did something that a mini maesters attempt but can't succeed? And didn't get sick. Maybe the instructions are way more difficult than I'm giving them credit for. Right. It seems like the instructions was have your man bite down and start pilling. Uh, I mean, yeah, but I mean, I don't know. I felt like I feel like we're having all these like miracles, these one in a millions in the show right now. So it just makes me feel like maybe Sam's special. Well, it's almost like it's all playing out like a prophecy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like maybe he's maybe he'll be part of it in some some way. The man who came back from the brink of the grayscale. Like maybe maybe Ow. someone else important will get grayscale and Sam will be like, 
good thing I know about that. I've healed someone once before. Absolutely. Amazing episode. Um, what do you think is going to happen now? So the Lannisters take High Garden checkmate. Gold. So, yes, grain, so they have gold. Provisions. Okay, so basically, exactly. So in my mind, they're gearing up for one. Well, it seems like there's going to be two final battles in this show. There's going to be the battle against the living and the dead and the battle against the queen. Basically, yeah, the Seven Kingdoms versus Daenerys. Yeah. Maybe we won't get that battle. Maybe one of the two parties will die against, you know, the army of the dead. Or, I mean, w- I hope the, they don't rob us of that, though. Right. I want to see them two go down. But they're like clocks ticking on the army of the dead. Like, we just, just like when we were so absorbed in that story, they're going to hit us. You know it. They always do that. Yeah. We're, we're so focused in this Game of Thrones and the army of the dead's like. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be icy when it happens. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out for sure. We're going to try to get the next episode out ASAP, and we'll see you guys on the next one.